you Autodesk for the opportunity to share our experience. Uh, it has been uh, a really great journey. So having a tool like this, which is really smart and understanding so much of not having so much of human intervention. So uh, let me introduce myself first, then my colleague, uh, myself, Guru Prasad. Uh, you can call me Guru anytime. So working as a general manager heading at the tool room, uh, which manages nearly around 175 to 200 molds annually. So start with a range of 100 to 3,500 tons. So we are around 40 years old company in India and with having nearly around 15 to 20% of export to Europe and also to the South of Africa. So really thank you and I would like to introduce uh, my colleague uh, who is Deepika, who is a mold co-expert and uh, she will have some, some case studies uh, showing you where we could use Autodesk uh, as a tool. Hello, I'm Deepika uh, and I'm working at Mutual Engineering Private Limited. I'm working here as an assistant mold flow engineer. I will have a few slides uh, which are very important as a basics, which is very, very important to have uh, managed uh, the molding cycle time when it comes to managing average. The average is like the quick cycle time. So what we generally follow is to have molding cycle time breakdown. So what does that really mean? So if you expect that can influence, which is already shared on my screen. So I'm, I hope this is what is our experience for the last 40 years and we have been following and we have been continuously learning and reflecting from our past learning. So product geometry, which is very, very important. Product wall thickness, which also contributes to the equal amount of how quickly can we mold a part how quickly can we get a right part out? So hot runner or cold runner feeding system is very, very important. Mold, molding facility equipped with chiller or MTC. No, no, these are very basic, but still are very, very important. So lower or higher water flow pressure is very, very important. Also for a designer, it's not only on a software, but also on the, when it comes to implementation of it. So it has to be very accurate. So what I would like to state, when it comes to molding cycle breakdown, 70% of it contributes to the cooling line. So where does this expertise come from? So we have a better tool. We have been utilizing uh, mold flow for the last uh, nearly 15 to 16 years. And this is where we got an advantage because having being a solution provider, uh, which is more from uh, the molding parts and get, getting the right part out and having around five to 10 parts and a better, which is a first time right approach. So uh, we tried and utilized uh, our best of our knowledge, which is again uh, coming back to the mold flow where we implement and we get have a right uh, results out. So few things as a basics, uh, because I come from a designing background and uh, this is where uh, is very, very important for any tool designer to follow this. And next is also the tool to use cooling channel diameters, which has to be near, nearly thicker, not very small. Uh, it has to be nearly thicker and uh, the images can very well are self-explanatory. Other side, uh, when anybody is designing the buffer cooling lines is also really important to, to see it is two times into the diameter. So these are the very basics where any tool designer starts following it. So when these are done, the results can be better. These also can be very well analyzed by using the tool. So uh, in a mold flow, just for illust illustration, so these are where a few of the live examples where we try practicing it, putting our own learning. So if you can directly see the results, you can see that in and out temperature where we try and manage is within plus and minus three degrees. So this is the target what we try to give to our tool designers to have like this and also verified with the mold flow. So other side is also wherever the temperature is up high. So we also have this done with conformal cooling or it can be also with a beryllium cooling, beryllium copper. So which has a higher thermal conductivity so there are also a key factor, like I mentioned a few minutes back, the key areas where there are limitations of a cooling line is very important. How do we address it? Is also to use a beryllium copper or high thermal conductivity, steel used, it can be anything. 
So, and also important is uh, conformal cooling, which we have been recently started using, and uh, we are very that the tool uh, can give us uh, better results. There are a few case studies which uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, my colleague could uh, directly take up on further slides. Uh, these are the live case studies where uh, we really got an advantage of uh, having before and after results done. Few things uh, were like uh, in a very initial phase uh, before the tool steel cutting was done. And few things were also challenging where around 5 to 10 percent of the cases where, you know, still we wanted to have a better result and still we could get it. So my colleague Deepika can uh, further take over. This is our first case study. And this we have used the material for part as PP 20 percent tile filled. So as you can see the pro in this uh, part we have done the cool flow warp analysis and uh, as you can see the parameters uh, we have used for this uh, analysis uh, as shown. In this part uh, we had the, the uh, heat accumulation in the part due to which the temperature in the cavity temperature was going very high which is above 90 degree due to which uh, limitation in the designing of the cooling area and the heat dissipation was uh, not so effective. So due to this, the we have observed the cycle time was going high. It's uh, nearby 45 seconds due to which the residual stresses are also developed in the part and uh, decrease of the part length dimensional stability, which we could not uh, able to achieve. So, and the, that there could be a chances of the product failure on the field or, te or testing. So after that, we have done some changes in the cooling lines due to which we found some uh, result which uh, cycle time, uh, we have reduced the cycle time 25 to 30 second and uh, we got the uniform uh, part cooling and the desired mold temperature which needed uh, which also we uh, got after the uh, changing the cooling lines so also it reduces the uh, residual stresses in the part and we also could uh, reduce the sink marks in the part so as you can see this part is very complicated and uh, in this the cooling is also very uh, challenging so we could not able to uh, do the cooling as needed so uh, as you can see the red uh, uh, red area in which the heat dissipation could not happen and uh, uh, the material which is uh, for uh, we have used that p20 that P20 has the very less mold thermal conductivity. So uh, heat dissipation is uh, also very less. So to overcome this issue, we have used the BUCU insert. So beryllium copper insert, as you can see, the mold, mold thermal conductivity was very high. So it can, uh, it has reduced the, it, it has reduced the temperature of the mold. And you can see that due to this, after cooling lines we have used after that, the circuit coolant temperature which we have observed before was high, like four to five degree. And after the changing of the cooling lines and the, using the beryllium copper insert, we can achieve the desired cooling temperature that is within the two degrees Celsius. You can see that after changing the cooling lines and uh, you, uh, reducing the mold uh, cavity temperature, the sink mark which uh, observed earlier was 0.05 to 0.44, which also reduced to 0.22 to uh, 0.05 to 0.22. So cooling has uh, actually given a better results, which we can see through uh, the simulation. It also has given a good result in the warpage and deformation and warpage result also reduced. So if, uh, you can see that before the it was a little bit high and after that it reduced to some extent. So this is our uh, case study number two. This uh, in this part we have used material 
PP 25% glass field and the 15% mineral field. And we have used in this uh, full flow warp analysis and the pa parameters for this analysis as shown. And in this area, if you can see in uh, left side that uh, heat accumulation area we have shown where uh, we, which was very challenging. So after that, we have changed the cooling lines of uh, uh, part and modified the cooling. So after modifying the cooling, the cycle time we have achieved to 40 to 45 seconds. And the, if we can see that the, in this uh, uh, uniform part cooling and the desired mold temperature for the next cycle and even uh, minimize the residual, uh, residual stresses in the part. In this, uh, after uh, changing the cooling line, we could uh, achieve the in and out temperature of the cooling uh, coolant. It's within two degrees Celsius. Uh, we could reduce the warpage results also. Uh, before the warpage was very high and after changing the cooling lines and giving and providing uniform cooling and the mold, it, uh, it, it has helped to reduce the warpage and deformation of the part. This is our case study three as a fan mounting housing and uh, the polymer used for this uh, part is PA66 30% glass filled and uh, the uh, in this process parameters as shown for the cool flow warp analysis as you can see the filling pattern of this part the challenge part was to achieve the dimension stability of the part. If you can see the center area of the part was very critical and the, to achieve the close tolerance of this part, we have done the conformal cooling in this part. So as I have told you, this is the hub area and which is very, very challenging because we have a requirement of very close tolerance and with the generic cooling, with the baffle and lines, we could not able to achieve the desired temperature of the mold. As you can see before cooling and with the standard cooling, we had uh, shown the temperature of the area was 85 to 95 degrees Celsius and uh, which is uh, not acceptable. and uh, so to reduce and to overcome this issue, we have uh, explored the conformal cooling for this hub area. So if you can see after using the conformal cooling for this part, we have the drastically changed the temperature of the part. Not only the, the temperature of the part, we also could achieve the close tolerance and dimension stability of the part also. So this way uh, we could uh, we could get the accurate right uh, decision and accurate re result of this part thank you thank you for opportunity thank you autodesk for giving this opportunity to us yes uh, again guru here really thank you if there are any questions really welcome so we are here to answer them. This is what uh, is our experience using this tool. And uh, we have been very much consistent uh, getting a support uh, and to see how best we can serve our customers and to see how faster cycle time we can get and how quickly we can have the project managed done. So from my side, if there are any questions, I'm available anytime to answer them on the platform. Thank you.